Good afternoon. Today, for the second time, we're very excited to have you for our virtual demo day. The seven companies you'll meet today were incorporated less than four months ago, and this is the first time they're uh, presenting to the public. At Atler, we search for outstanding talent to build the defining companies of tomorrow. We help entrepreneurs build strong founding teams, validate their business idea, and we provide them with a strong global advisory network. Orson, as you join uh, from a traditional venture capital background, what in the Antler model you found so interesting? Yeah, difficult to distill to one point, but I'll do my best. I think one of the key aspects for me was the ability to be part of a global organization. So, and, and I think that has huge value, not only from an investment standpoint, where I can see what's happening in Sydney beforehand, what's happening in New York, and actually also help to distill my learnings that I'm seeing in London back to those countries as well. But I think also on top of that, the ability to provide that network, so helping our entrepreneurs to scale into new geographies, attract talent, potentially win customers. And then I think when you combine that with the really local approach that Antler takes, that ability to be in the ecosystem, be core and central to that, build deep relationships with co-investors, with talent pools, with you know, potential customers, I think we're really changing the way that early stage venture is done. And then on, on top of that, I think really helping to deliver great returns for our investors, but also deliver a great experience for our entrepreneurs. Yeah, I think this relates a lot to uh, our view, which is that talent is now distributed uh, across the globe, and this has driven our expansion globally. But more importantly also, and going forward, in the UK is driving us to establish strong networks with the right centers of excellence across the country. And this is to identify the, the best entrepreneurs to help them uh, build the defining companies of, uh, of tomorrow. And, and I think it's such an interesting and valid point, this kind of focus on, on the, the founders. You know, everyone, when we're investing in an early stage and coming from, from, from my kind of previous role as a, as a traditional VC, you know, we would look at market, we'd look at all these kind of other aspects. But really, team is the, is the key factor that dictates the successful failure of, that, of the startup at that early stage. You know, take the last 12 to 18 months, markets have changed, different kind of like technologies have been adopted. Finding those teams who are able to react best to that, that I think is ultimately the factor that dictates the successful failure of their startup, not only in the short term, but, it, but in the long term. But I think on top of that, the, the, I guess the viewers, uh, the viewers would love to hear a little bit more about how we think about selecting these teams. What are the factors that we look for when we look for these entrepreneurs? Yeah, that's a great question. I think from a, f when we select entrepreneurs to join our, our cohorts, we search for three main characteristics. The first one is drive. So that ability uh, of, of the entrepreneurs to be self-motivated. Um, the second one is perseverance, the ability to drive and, and not give up when times are, are difficult. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, and, and very importantly, it's what we call a spike. And a spike is either a, a functional expertise or a sectoral expertise that provides the entrepreneur with uh, an unfair advantage as they build their business. Now, we're all excited to hear about the companies and hear uh, the, the presentations. Veronica, uh, who's our program director, will be introducing the teams over from the studio. Thanks, Antoine. The seven teams you'll hear from today joined us on their entrepreneurial journey a little over six months ago. We've just been blown away by the amount of progress they were able to make in such a short amount of time. If you would like to get in touch with any of our founding teams, just head over to demoday.antler.co forward slash London and choose your team. Our first team today is our power duo Erez and Thomas. With their video job marketplace Swivel, they are reimagining the way we recruit for entry-level positions. They've already taken over the delivery sector by a storm, cannot wait to see where they go next. Just from the minute we decided to work together, it was obvious that there is no other choice. For me, I think the most uh, exciting thing about working with Erez is that I think he's a, a natural visionary. Like, you know, whoever's watching this now, 
watch it back in two years' time because it's going to be crazy where this guy will take it, I'm telling you. Working with Tom is uh, one of the greatest privileges. That's my partner for changing the world. Yeah, we got pretty deep pretty fast. <laughs> but I'm, I'm definitely someone that likes to get the blinkers on and, and work forward at times. And errors can bring like, me out of that place. It's a very nice way of saying that Thomas is an unstoppable force. But I think we've, we've, we've reached a point as well where there's more than just colleagues or whatever happens with the company, there's someone to go through an important step of our, our lives together for sure. We're not afraid to carve a vision together and kind of make it happen. We know we've built everything with our own hands and everything can be changed, everything can be moved. There's nothing out of our reach and there's no dream that we can't bring into place. That mentality is the mentality that we're going to move forward always with this business. Some say the world is facing one of the greatest unemployment crises of a generation. This crisis has affected blue-collar workers more than any other demographic and brought to the center stage the systemic inefficiencies of placing people in jobs. Where do these inefficiencies come from? Would you hire this person? The truth is, even after you've taken a closer look, you would not be able to decide because this is not a person. This is a piece of paper. It does not reflect the qualities of the individual behind it, either because they're unable to express it on a page or because some human qualities are impossible to communicate through text. When hiring for blue collar positions, there are often no minimum qualifications for the role. So what would you even look for on this page? Now imagine you would have to go through thousands of these CVs every year and make decisions on who to invite to interview and hire without knowing who they are until they actually get to the interview. Our entire industry is working like this. At Swivel, we think differently. We understood that blue collar workers apply to positions using CVs in lack of a better alternative because the demographic that is in the greatest need to mobilize its career does not have a professional identity online. We know that people are much more than what's on paper, so we set ourselves to build that alternative and to focus on the people. We realize that if a picture is worth a thousand words, a video is worth a thousand pictures, so we've built the first video-powered job marketplace in the UK, a professional social network, a community where blue-collar workers have a professional identity online. Building our platform, we're innovating on multiple fronts, from our product and technology, to our business model and operational process. I would like to give you a glimpse to some of these exciting innovations today. Looking at the current recruitment process, we knew our product had to change the way companies look at their candidates. With the rise of millennials and Generation Z, video became the number one tool for media consumption. So instead of paper CVs, we use video profiles with bite-sized videos to enable hiring managers to make better hiring decisions based on the people. Our vision is to build a professional social network. So we've already started acquiring video profiles to expand our community. Today, we have over 5,000 unique video profiles. Our entire operational process is video centric and produces extremely high quality matches. In just one session, one of our paying customers had picked 30 out of 32 shortlisted candidates straight from the platform to an onboarding at the same time it was previously taking them to shortlist one candidate. Same time, 30 to one return and over 90% in matching success. Now these improvement metrics are consistent across our paying customers. We've also noticed that job boards charge companies obscene monthly fees in order to advertise jobs. So we've designed a new credit-based pricing model that enables companies to pay a fixed monthly subscription to list jobs and then using credits, only pay for the candidates they invite to interview. Our clients pay only for value. We focus on the retail and deliveries industries that are growing rapidly even during the pandemic and are planning to ride the massive wave of rehiring to skyrocket our marketplace. We're moving quickly. We started this January and have already launched our platform to the market, onboarded our paying customers and have placed over 100 people and jobs through the platform in only a few months. Some of our paying customers are the industry leaders in the grocery delivery market. 
two of which are unicorns. Today, with them, we are already making over 4,000 pounds monthly. Now that's money in the bank, not plans. In the next 12 months, with our paying customers, we have over 2,000 positions that we are set to hire for, which would result in a projected revenue of over 260,000 pounds. We're also having conversations with some of the top supermarket chains and retailers in the UK. Across our sales pipeline, we have over 30,000 positions, which would result in a projected revenue of over 10 million pounds annually. So who's the team behind the mission? My name is Erez, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Swivel. I moved to the UK from Israel to join Antler and build this business. I served in the special computing units in the Israeli army as a developer and monitoring solutions engineer. And in the past decade, I worked in multiple ventures as a product leader and entrepreneur. My co-founder, Thomas Keen, is an experienced entrepreneur. For his last venture, he moved from the UK to Egypt for four years, where he co-founded and ran business development for his solar energy company, closing deals with JW Marriott Group, Steinberg Group, and Carrefour. Our CTO, Tomer, was a, an F-15 technical commander in the Israeli Air Force and has graduated in computer science from the Hebrew University with excellence. Together, we have a core team in Israel, which consists of high quality talent and a team overseas, which we can scale at low cost to support the customer service and operations. We have already achieved the first step of our vision, which is to build a next generation recruitment tool and establish ourselves as a market leader in the delivery space in the UK. Around this tool, we're building a blue collar network that will enable companies to see the people behind the CVs. Join us in our mission to create a space for blue collar workers to have a professional identity online. Next up, we have Amani, who are on a mission to transform risk monitoring and early warning in emerging and frontier markets. Bringing together field experience and data science, Paul and Sana join forces with a common mission to create a more investable and safer world. The key difference between us perhaps is, is Sana's numbers and I'm words. I think we're, we're really different, right? But in a way, that's what's really helped us to almost force the understanding in a really short space of time. Because we're so different, we've had to have those really open discussions at an early stage. And because we're working remotely in different continents, we've had to uh, learn how to communicate really, really well. Paul is very kind and down to earth person. He is running a, uh, supporting a charity program in personal capacity. He has traveled a lot of countries, like I am even unable to count those. And he's very structured and organized. It's a high compliment to have a data scientist call you structured. Sana is actually highly structured when it comes to planning out a strategy and a product and seeing all those pieces come together. We are equally motivated to build something for social good. To know him more is actually more satisfaction and more confidence for me that, yeah, I am with the right co-founder and I am building something which is, I'm motivated in and it's, it's equally motivated for the Paul as well. At Imani, we are providing critical information that lets businesses operate effectively in the world's most insecure cities. In 2019, while working with the UN in Afghanistan, the Taliban attacked our friend's Kabul residents. Tragically, many foreign and local people died that day. Even more tragically, it turned out that lives might have been saved. You see, local people anticipated the attack and tried to warn authorities. The security managers who might have made a difference just did not have the tools to listen. My name is Paul Kluwitz, I'm the CEO of Imani. In the years before starting Imani, I directed research in some of the world's most fragile countries for the UN, the World Bank, and major international NGOs. I started Imani with Sana Rashid, our CTO. She led data science teams at Accenture, and before that, pioneered the very first predictive algorithms that let the Pakistan government know when and where suicide and drone attacks 
were most likely to occur. She saved lives with that work and helped give people control back over their futures. Violent crime, civil unrest, and terrorism have a huge economic as well as human cost. In fact, the World Economic Forum held instability, not COVID, to be the biggest growing constraints on emerging market economies. Our main customers are multinational corporations in Europe and the US, and they tell us that they are more risk averse than ever precisely at the time when they need to make their overseas investments work. We're helping them do just that. We're building communities of thousands of local people who tell us what they see, think, and feel on a regular basis. They do so via a WhatsApp platform, and in exchange, they receive small financial payments, and we found huge satisfaction that they're contributing to the safety and prosperity of their neighborhoods. We turn those data into insights. These are insights that our customers can action. They can take proactive steps when, for example, protests threaten to overrun a downtown office or local criminal groups target their staff for kidnap. With hundreds of millions of dollars in assets and employee lives at stake, corporations are willing to pay a premium for this kind of information. Right now, they engage analytics firms and set up their own in-house operation centers. But the analysts they employ spend hundreds of hours sending emails and making phone calls, hundreds more scouring the internet for clues, and even more time commissioning formal research. I get it, I've been in their position, spending $30,000 on, on a few dozen interviews and a report that was out of date the second it hit the client's desk. It's this realization on which automated information platforms such as Attest, Streetbees, and Premise are built. They've been transformational for the market research industry in Europe and the US, but much less successful outside of mature markets and with sensitive subjects like security. Our founding team's long experience building communities in Africa and Asia and deep data modeling expertise means that we can generate the kind of insights that would have got my friend out of that building before the Taliban struck. And we're already showing we can. We've built thriving communities of 2,000 people in Lagos, Nigeria and Kabul, Afghanistan. Customers can already mobilize them with just a few clicks of their mouse. We're in advanced talks on potential pilots with four such customers, including leaders in the telecoms and security spaces. Put yourself in the shoes of the head of security at that telecoms company. In a single African country, he's responsible for securing 30,000 structures. He needs communities on site, and for that, he needs to be able to listen to them. He's not the only one. The global risk consulting industry grew 40% in just five years, and next year, we'll cross the $100 billion mark. In our next five years, we'll expand to 300 cities, in each of those securing 100 location-based subscriptions. At an average value of 5,000 pounds each, that's 150 million pounds in annual recurring revenue. We can scale this fast because as well as being able to set up in a new location in just two weeks with a small and temporary presence on the ground, onboarding is so straightforward. Clients purchase credits, they watch an onboarding video tutorial, and then they're ready to go. This means an executive in London can raise questions about assets in Libya on a Monday morning and get the answers she needs to rest easy by that same Monday evening. And that's Amani. We're building a virtuous cycle between business and community. The more our communities grow, the better the quality and predictive power of our information. In turn, this means that businesses can operate effectively and with confidence wherever they are in the world, bringing revenue, jobs, and ultimately prosperity to those very same communities. Thank you for listening, and we look forward to you joining us on this journey. Our third company today is CData, a cybersecurity platform that identifies previously undetected data leakage incidents by seeding false data. Enrico paired up with Matt, a true cybersecurity veteran, to help companies finally have peace of mind over their data. It was an end of an hour long call where we both sort of down a phone, looked each other in the eye and said, all right, what do we do with this? So we met six months ago, pretty much to the day. Uh, we started off with 
a, a joint interest in a completely different business. But the, I think the energy from that conversation is what brought us together initially. And we kind of met at, at the right time in the right place because uh, I was looking to start something new in, in, at the intersection between data and cybersecurity. And also Matt has been advising startups for the last few years in the cybersecurity space and he was looking to get some, some skin in the game. So we, we, we kind of met there and, and got along very well. I think we, we don't overlap too much or we overlap in the right places. So I, I tend to take care of fundraising, sales and partnerships opportunities while Matt is, is busy uh, with our full stack developer and thinking about new, new ideas uh, around the product. We had to rip each other's ideas to pieces. You know, there's some, some real bravery and honesty in these conversations. So doing that remotely and with somebody that you didn't really know very well was potentially very, very hard work, but actually in reality worked out really well. <laughs> it was a, a very a trusting experience. We want to become the go-to place for data seeding. We've got high hopes to be the next $1 billion company, or hopefully more. Let's try that again, let's say $10 billion. Hello everyone, please meet John. John is a Chief Information Security Officer at a FTSE 100 company. But unfortunately, John is going to get fired today and his CEO might be next. His cybersecurity team just detected a data breach. But the problem is the incident happened nearly a year ago and they only found out about it today because a customer told them. This is typical. The average data breach is undetected for 206 days and often reported by a third party. The reason is simple. If you think about physical crimes, if you have your car stolen, there's a sign that something has been taken, the gap in your driveway. And cars often come with a GPS tracker to aid recovery. But in digital crimes, if you don't stop them taking your data, there's no sign that something has been taken and without any sort of alarm, you won't even know for a long time. A typical one-year incident has an average financial cost of $4 million, but costs also go up significantly for longer incidents. Just think about the four-year-long Marriott data breach, which had a total financial impact of $1.7 billion. But there's some good news for John and the other CISOs out there. You can also decrease significantly costs by detecting data breaches faster to $1 million if you detect them within the first three months. Now, please meet Matt, my co-founder. He's been very much like John fighting cybercrime for the last 25 years, working as a chief information security officer for large organizations such as Unilever, John Lewis, Education First, until we met six months ago and we decided to do something about this using his domain expertise in the cybersecurity space and my knowledge about commercializing data and SaaS products. Together, we're building C-Data, a cybersecurity deception technology platform that help our customers detecting cybersecurity breaches faster. This is how it works. We see trackable items of data within our customer systems. And then we monitor the internet, deep and dark web for any exposure of these seeds. We also monitor any interactions with the seeds themselves. The concept here is that our trackable items of data are unique and should only ever be visible within our customer systems. If and when we detect any signal, we analyze and validate them using artificial intelligence and then alert back our customers 24 seven, acting as a GPS tracker for our clients' data. Our vision is for our customers to be able to see any data type within their systems seamlessly. To do that, we're partnering up with leading vendors, Salesforce being the first one, and we're gonna be live in their app exchange by June. Salesforce customers will be able to create, manage, and expire seeds within their Salesforce instance. And further partnership will bring the same capabilities to other platforms. But the interesting stuff is happening behind the scenes. 
where RIP sits. Our analysis engine acquires and analyzes thousands of signals from multiple sources every second. We look for correlation and confirmation of events across all data. And the more events we catalog, the better our algorithm becomes, reducing false positives for our clients. So far, our technology has gathered significant interest from cybersecurity teams within mid to large B2C organizations, handling vast amount of customer data. We've just concluded nine proof of concept with global customers, and we're confident we're going to be able to convert a number of them into paying customers soon. And we're also in advanced conversations with a number of partners, cyber insurers, and leading tech vendors. CISOs are spending annually in excess of $120 billion to protect their organization from cyber attacks. But they know prevention is not enough. It's not a matter of if, but when. With C data, we're providing you full visibility of your data beyond your perimeter and knowledge of how and when it got there. If this sounds interesting, please get in touch with me. Thank you. Charlotte, Al and Daniel, aka Calda, are bringing together a true passion for mental health, as well as deep product experience to create an LGBT community wellbeing app. Never has there been more need for a safe place to find group therapy and to give and receive peer support from your own community. We did just stick our names together to make the, the, the name Calda. <laughs> Charlotte, Al, and wait, no, Charlotte, Al, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> We're basically one person now. We can't actually differentiate between each other. We all had this kind of vision about better mental health services, and we all had different backgrounds in it. So Al was doing the guided meditation coaching and also has been, you know, a tech person for a long time. So my co-founder, Daniel, is the CEO of Calder. Daniel just gets on with everyone. He's so good at building connections and talking to investors just really, really comes naturally to him. Charlotte is our product brain and it's been so amazing to have such a clear, like, driving force behind the product. So kind of the combination of, like, Al and Charlotte is just just been unstoppable for us. The idea of starting a business uh, with people you've just met and working remotely just seemed like a stretch goal, but it's been so easy. Yeah, yeah, it, it has, it has. I think we joined together for the skills and then stay for the bands. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> we have our own dance. It's, um... Yeah, why do we do this again? Hi, I'm Daniel, co-founder and CEO of Calder, and we're building the world's first mental well-being app for the LGBT community. Imagine, you're struggling with your mental health. You go to a doctor, they tell you your issues are due to your sexuality or gender identity. One in two people in the LGBT community have experienced depression in the last year, more than three times the general population but there's a problem accessing mental health support. NHS wait times can last up to a year. The alternative of private therapy is too expensive, up to 120 pounds per session. And with the stigma the LGBT community faces, one in four in the community have witnessed discriminatory remarks from healthcare staff. The community is disproportionately affected by mental health issues and disproportionately discriminated against when accessing support. This is an urgent problem, and my team and I are here to solve it. We have 18 years of combined experience working in the field of mental health. We know our community really well, and we have the clinical expertise to build great health products. In the last four years, I built an award-winning and NHS-approved medical device used to treat and prevent mental health issues 
Al Arcitio is a leader in the LGBT community, founder of Midsummer, an LGBT festival that has run for over eight years, and they're a guided meditation therapist. And Charlotte Arcipio designed Public Health England's digital health evaluation service. She's designed services for MIND and is a crisis counselor. And Uz Afsal, one of our first clinical hires, is a leading mindfulness therapist. She's created courses to reduce anxiety and depression, and she's a published mindfulness author. So now let's imagine a new future. You're struggling with your mental health. You find Calder. And for just 10 pounds a month, you have access to weekly group therapy and daily peer support in a community of people just like you. We've built the platform of the future where everyone in our community can access the mental health support they need. Studies have shown that group therapy with people of a shared identity have better health outcomes. Users will be able to access group therapy immediately, bypassing NHS wait times. And we can provide group therapy 24 times cheaper than the average monthly cost of therapy. And we're creating a stigma-free space so that users can access daily support based on proactive self-care. We support people's mental health through daily self-reflection questions written by LGBT therapists that complement our group therapy that allow you to explore your thoughts and feelings, just like you would in one-on-one -on -one therapy. So our users can get happy, get accountable, and get it together. We've just launched our platform, and over 1,200 people have signed up to our waitlist, and we're onboarding them every day. And we're already seeing spontaneous growth through word of mouth, where one in 10 of our users is now a direct referral from our existing user base. And we have plans to harness our network effects through referral schemes of give and get one month on the platform. And our Cowdens love it, as we affectionately love to call them. Since launching our pilot, we've already achieved a net promoter score of 67. And in the last two months, 80% of our users have posted a self-reflection every single day. Our business model is a monthly subscription of 10 pounds that will be unit profitable by month six and based on other subscription models, we believe we can achieve an LTV CAC of 11. And the market is huge. One in six people born between 97 and 2002 are LGBT. Compare that to just one in 10 of my parents' generation. The UK market alone is worth 1.3 billion pounds. But around the world, there are many more people who need our help. That's millions of people, no longer isolated, getting the mental health support they need. Calder works because we're for the community, by the community. And don't just take my word for it. One of our Caldens said, checking in about my mental health and well-being has made a huge difference. And I love how it feels safe because it is safer to do it with your own community. We've all seen how this pandemic has torn apart our sense of community and belongingness. And we're seeing the effects on our population's mental health. Now imagine for the LGBT community who already struggle with a sense of belonging. We're building the future of mental health support so we can say to all of our friends, our community, you are not alone. So I invite you to join us in our vision because together we've got this. Max and Robert set out to increase transparency for construction deliveries with CoLogic. Their software solution aims to bring the same level of visibility we all enjoy when we order our dinner through an app to site managers of multi-million pound construction sites. It is, it is this uncertainty that is kind of exciting but also scaring at the same time. Max is a big picture thinker so he likes to uh, see how things progress, whereas I'm more of a deep thinker, so we kind of complement each other. Yeah, it has been like meeting a soulmate, but with entirely different professional skill sets. We kind of have the feeling that we've known each other for quite 
a few years, even though it's been a few months. Yeah. I've lived abroad for, for many years, I've uh, traveled multiple countries, did um, backpacking trips. And uh, so this kind of passion has always been something that, that we kind of share. It's quite funny to have actually someone that you just know for, for a couple of months that shares very similar experiences and, and sees also the world from an entirely different view. It's very important to know where you need to put your focus into. And this is something that I've learned from him. Uh, he, he always says, uh, focus is the most important. We both have this ambition to build a company for the next 10, 20, 30 years for potentially millions of people. It is something that yeah, keeps, you, keeps you running every day. Hey everyone, I'm Max, co-founder of CoLogic. My father is a contractor and I work from doing school holidays learning the ins and outs of construction projects. Contractors are firms that work at a construction site. Bricklayers build the walls, roofers do the roof, you name it. Contractors usually work with dedicated suppliers that deliver the materials straight to site. Many times I heard him complaining about his material supplies. He doesn't exactly know when the material arrives at his sites, meaning his workers must wait for the material or that the truck shows up and none of his workers is there to receive the material. To prevent the issue, he calls the logistics manager, who calls the truck driver, and so on. This inefficiency happens at any construction site globally. It leads to millions of hours of wasted labor and resources every single day. Seeing this huge problem, I wanted to apply a proven concept. At Uber Eats, I automated processes that improved the transparency on food deliveries. It increased completed trips per hour and customer NPS. To validate this concept in construction, CoLogic ran a pilot at 20 Ropemaker Street, a 200 million pound project in London. We worked with the contractor Keltray running the site and one of their suppliers, Prima Grange, making material deliveries transparent like an Uber Eats order. We monitored Prima Grange's vehicle location and informed Calbray side team ahead of the arrival. Our messages eliminated countless calls and reduced idling time by 79%, saving Prima Grange 1,000 pound per day. And even Calbray could save up to 2,000 pound per day. Encouraged by these savings, we developed a working app for iOS and Android. On the left-hand side, you see the driver app monitoring the vehicle location. On the right-hand side, you see the site app that automatically informs the site ahead of the arrival. We will sell our app to material suppliers and are in advanced conversations with potential clients, both in the UK and Germany. For some, this problem is so painful that they've implemented manual hacks. It is an industry with tight margins and almost set revenues and costs. Our app allows material suppliers to improve their operating margins by reducing variable costs per load and improving service levels to improve the revenue. In the UK, we have a market of 24,000 material suppliers with more than 120,000 vehicles. Providing transparency is becoming critical due to increasing regulations around safety carbon emissions and compliance. For Ecologic, this offers a significant upselling potential. So how do we make money? We will charge 40 pound per vehicle and 500 pound per company per month on an annual software as a service contract. What are the alternatives today? 30 to 40% of UK's commercial vehicles use traditional tracking devices that monitor the vehicle speed, location or fuel consumption. Traditional tracking generates data for internal monitoring, keeping data in a silo. Currently, there's no alternative that integrates data from various data sources. CoLogic not only generates data through smartphones, but will also integrate data from existing tracking devices, making data accessible across companies through a smartphone. In an industry where business is done on the phone, CoLogic builds a solution on the phone. So why are we the right team to build this? With Rocket Internet, I built a leading online car marketplace in Indonesia. 
at Uber Eats are automated key processes, enabling the expansion from five to 100 cities. At Oyo are built a profitable portfolio of 20 hotels from scratch. At Antler, I met our CTO, Robert. He created data monitoring tools at Skype and developed SUP's flagship in-memory database. Two industry experts already advise us. Join us today to help construction tackle the logistical challenges of today and tomorrow through automation and data integration. Thank you. Emmanuel, a true B2B sales expert, found the perfect match in Jamie and Alex, who have years of experience creating products that scale and stand the test of time. They are now building a writing assistant and outreach intelligence platform to help salespeople to unlock value by writing the right sales message every time. I gelled very, very uh, quickly with Emmanuel, to be honest with you, um, and I knew that he was someone that I wanted to work with. Took a bit longer with me. We're still not there. <laughs> we all come from a technology background, but we've all come at it from very different angles. But what I think is great about Jamie is your ability to extract that one line from a customer, a potential customer we're talking to, that then blooms into an entire feature of what we're building. Alex is in charge of software development, so he's uh, just super fast on computers. And uh, if I have a question, that I need to get answered. Usually before I have fully completed my question, he already has the answer. I knew I wanted to work with someone who's very commercially driven and has that focus and understands what that means for, for companies. And, you know, Emmanuel leaning on his experience is, is hugely valuable to what, what we're doing. We are not only complementary in, in skills, but we also work very well together in this remote uh, environment. We managed to incorporate the company, we managed to find our first customers, we managed to bring a product to market. And just for me, that's a testament that you know, we have the right team culture uh, here to deliver. And so uh, I, I'm you know, very optimistic and confident that with this team, you know, we'll, we'll achieve the goals that we have. Hi, I'm Emmanuel Fraunlup, a co-founder of Message AI. I've been in B2B sales the last 25 years, trained over 100 salespeople and grew revenues from 10 to 40 million for my last company. I believe that sales is a key enabler for innovation and development in business and society. However, the lack of quality and the increasing irrelevance of sales messaging is blocking many sales organizations from delivering value to their customers. This is why we created Message AI, software that helps salespeople turn cold outreach into warm conversations. Let me introduce you to Amanda. Amanda recently graduated from university and is now working as a salesperson in a large technology company. It's her job to find new customers and to get the first meeting. She does so by writing hundreds of personalized emails every month. How many responses you think she will get from her cold outreach? Only one in 10 will get back to her. The rest will simply ignore her email. Why is this? Writing sales copy is difficult. Is your text buyer-centric enough? Is it engaging enough? And is your call to action not too demanding? But besides that, there is a more fundamental problem. Salespeople don't know which messaging works for the different customer personas. Is the analytical tone really the best when addressing a head of marketing in Germany? Which of your customer references are performing best when talking to sales leaders in the US? And what is the optimal length for an email to a CEO in the UK? This is not a new problem. Over the last few years, new tools introduced complex communication sequences. Today, a standard sales outreach has 14 steps across email, LinkedIn, and calls. Sales teams are sending more emails than ever before, but at the same time, response rates declined by 25%. So, is sending more emails really the answer? 
We believe there is a better way. We believe it's time to increase response rates by focusing on quality. Just imagine if you could have a data scientist and a professional copywriter next to you while writing your sales emails. This is exactly what Message AI does. Message AI is an outreach intelligence platform that sits on top of your email, sales engagement tool, or CRM. It provides you with data-driven insights of what works and what doesn't in your sales emails. Message AI has three main capabilities. The writing assistant, prospect insights, and email intelligence. So let's have a look at how Message AI helps Amanda to write an effective sales email. Amanda starts a new email and types in the prospect's email address. Using her company's CRM data, Message AI identifies her target persona and shows a list of the last successful emails for that specific target group. Amanda then can simply copy-paste part or the full email. Then Amanda switches to the Prospect Insight tab to learn more about her prospect and to personalize her outreach. And finally, she reviews the suggestions of the writing assistant. These suggestions are tailored to her target persona, ensuring that her email resonates. Amanda implements the highlighted suggestions and sends a great sales message that's based on a proven successful email, personalized with relevant information, and optimized for the target persona she's addressing. Message AI is a freemium product that will be used by thousands of customers every day. We'll acquire new users through our freemium model. We will use product-like growth mechanics like free data credits for user referrals. And we will deploy our sales team to accelerate adoption in larger organizations. I'm very happy that with Alex and Jamie, I found two co-founders with complementary skills, very different backgrounds, but a strong alignment on, the, on our vision. Jamie is an experienced product leader. At Sky, Oil, and Deloitte, he launched products that touched millions of lives. He's a product person at heart leads with a strong product vision and is obsessed with providing the optimal user experience. Alex is an accomplished software engineer who was head of engineering at the Deloitte Fast 50 startup Popsa. He's an expert in building scalable applications in the cloud and in growing high performance data science and engineering teams. Together, we have developed our proposition. We have tested it with early customers like Oracle, Exactly, and FactSet. And we have released our first product. As of today, we have a sign-to-sign -sign partnership with Agreed Pricing with Attest, a leading UK SaaS company. And we signed up more than 300 companies for our waiting list. This includes salespeople from Google, Amazon, Fivo, CultureAmp, and many other leading technology companies. We are here to help salespeople turn cold outreach into warm conversations. We are here to spark meaningful human connections that help companies grow. So join us in building the world's first outreach intelligence platform. Last but not least, our final team today is Harry, Hyrie, and Yeva, who are reimagining the way we work with their marketplace of local, highly inspiring, and flexible workspace solutions around where you live called Flowspace. We believe that it's like a next generation startup that we are building here, and, and work life balance is in our veins. Thank you, thank you. Mm. This is Yeva. Uh, Yeva is our Chief Growth Officer. Yeva is the, very much the customer champion and the, uh, always considering the, the, the brand growth and strategy and, and Hyrie is very much building this amazing tech uh, expertise. Hyrie is the structure guy. 
Um, no wonder he has like architectural background. He brings that to the conversation all the time, and that's that's amazing. The, the backdrop of the baby crying is actually quite uh, fitting to this, <laughs> to, <laughs> to this because I mean, uh, Freya would join, joined us kind of nine months ago and has been there throughout this this journey. Uh, a lot of the time, her nursery has been closed, so I think the guys have been incredibly understanding. We we work in a similar way. We have similar expectations. We all have. Uh, family lives, and we all respect that. You want to try? Oh. There you go. Oh. That's what she wanted. That's what she wanted. <laughs> you know, I, I wake up in the morning and I want to see these guys, and that's, yeah. <laughs> we intuitively know what each other is working on and, and w what each other's skills are. And we love each other. I would like uh, confidently say that. We're very proud of what we've built so far as a team, and I think it's, it's definitely the foundation for what we're going to build in the future. As I speak to you today, a lot has changed from a year ago. 2020 was the year the world went remote. My name's Harry, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Flowspace, and we believe in a new local workday. Before the pandemic, only one in 50 workers was a remote worker, and that's expected to be almost half the entire UK workforce post COVID. The world has woken up to understand that the way we were working was stuck in the past and that everyone stands to benefit from embracing remote work. Amazingly, 94% of workers now expect remote working options, and 86% of companies plan to offer them, meaning the work week as we knew it is set to be radically transformed. As we look to the future, we believe in the vision of a 15-minute city, a post-COVID vision for urban living. You stay local, you work within your neighborhood, and crucially, you reclaim your life from a previously overextended version of work. Presently, business leaders all over the world are examining what the future work week holds. Within our target customer, the desire is clear to work remotely at least 60% of the time. And during a typical work week, there are three occasions that they will seek to access workspaces close to their home. This is the emerging demand that we'll provide for. Those times you need to leave your home to focus and re-energize, but you're not willing to travel to your office. Flowspace is the missing link to a happy, healthy work week. But to create this, we must solve the problem that it's difficult to access workspaces close to your home to use when you need them. Today, everything is located in the city centers, which makes a local workday all but impossible. To solve this, we're building a marketplace of inspiring, hyper-local, on-demand workspaces that will serve the new distributed remote workforce. We're already listing 30 of the most desirable local workspaces around London on our platform, and we have customers using our service. Customers like Liam. Liam runs his own small business and made the brave decision to go fully remote last year. However, he still has regular needs to get together with his team or to get out of his shared house to concentrate. When Liam needs a flow space, he opens the app, he chooses the space that best suits his needs that day, he can check where his team are working from in case he wishes to invite them to join him, confirms availability, and books. Liam's company's workspace is a platform on his phone in his pocket. And there's at least 25 million people in Liam's situation today across Europe. With the average use case of three visits to a local workspace per week, these customers will spend 900 pounds annually on this service, showing us there's a total addressable market of 22 billion pounds. And that's only set to skyrocket the remote work genie is out of the bottle. There's projected to be 1 billion people globally in this market by 2035. So creating a quality network of workspaces that enable people to walk to work will be vital. Through our platform, we are listing existing work-friendly spaces, but we are also enabling new spaces to be created. We've built a future of work modular design concept with our world-class design partners to provide space transformation services to owners of underutilized retail or office spaces, where we provide our flow space brand, our modular concept, our tech platform, and access to customers, and the space owner takes the investment to transform their space and lists exclusively on flow spaces platform. The ability to create a new world of local workspaces is a key differentiator for us. Our product focus is geared towards employers who wish to support their team's remote work experience. Through different tiers of subscriptions, each worker can find just the right amount of hours to use in a flow space each month. 
Our business model is based on a booking commission and a margin on subscriptions. Through this, we'll deliver 81 million in annual revenue by 2025. As we go to market, we'll focus initially on small remote first companies, then mid-sized hybrid companies, and then enterprise level. Today, we have four companies using our platform, and to highlight just one, TransferGo has 50 employees, and they're using FlowSpace in combination with downsizing their existing office space. And we're confirming agreements with 11 more companies. So who's we? As a team, we have key experience in creating spaces and brands. Myself, I've spent my entire career bringing to life spaces that offer belonging, built an award-winning chain of shared workspaces, and led 70 million in annual turnover. Hyrie, our COO, is an innovative global architect, holding vital design insights to the future of work, making him uniquely positioned to lead our product strategy. And Yeva, our chief growth officer, having launched and scaled several lifestyle brands to multiple European markets, she has the expertise to turn Flowspace into a global brand. We've built an amazing team these last months, and we have key strategic advisors in place to help us with tech, commercial real estate, digital marketing, and finance. We'll be the team with the spark and the expertise to go after this huge market opportunity and the tenacity to not let it slip. Where you spend your everyday working life is of massive consequence to yourself and to the planet. We are in the era of the great reimagining of how and where we work. And we believe working locally has the greatest potential to shape our progress over the coming decades. The time is now, and Flowspace will be the leader of this transformation. Thank you Team Flowspace for another great pitch. And that's the cohort. We hope you enjoyed seeing what our latest group of companies have been up to. We've had a really busy six months at Antler and it's amazing to see how far our companies can come in such a short period of time. If you'd like to connect with any of the companies you've seen today, just head to demoday.antler.co forward slash London and fill in the form online. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Silicon Valley Bank, who for more than 35 years have helped businesses and investors push bold ideas forward. And Whitesmith, a leading tech startup partner who have helped with tech development of our UK portfolio. We're also really excited to announce that the fourth Antler UK cohort will kick off on the 21st of June. We're always looking for exceptional founders to join us, so if that's you, just head to our website and apply there. Thank you.